then. And then um, you'll have to find it wherever you are saving it to on the computer. And then you just, you know, right. drag it to YouTube. Right. Okay. All right. All right. But I will say my, 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 uh, Emily, if you want to get her in here, it might, she didn't know that it was going to be like using the video recording. So she might want to like do her hair. I don't know. So <laughs> let, me, let me let her know that real quick and I'll be right okay. back. I don't care. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be able to look at it. We'll bring it up. The video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. Now we know how to do new pictures on Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I need them. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, right Where are the kiddos? <laughs> uh, one, uh, one sleeping, and one is with the uh, sitter. For luckily, we got somebody to come right now. <laughs> anyway, uh, M's coming. That's cool. We, she's coming. We, we could start. Yeah, so okay. yeah, throw throw me your your toughest questions. I like, how did you start in the business? How did I start? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I guess my first professional job, is that what you want to know? I uh, don't know. How did you get interested in it? Okay. Well, it started, I guess, when I was 12. And um, my parents, oh, we're bringing a kiddo here. Okay. Oh, the little guy. Oh, hello. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Hey, um, good. So uh, I, I started um, at uh, in Swarthmore, Pennsylvania. There's a place called uh, Swarthmore Players Club. And they have a thing called Young People's Theater Workshop where um, they let students take classes in dancing, singing, and acting for uh, kids between the age of 12 and 18. And that's what got me interested in, in musical theater. And then I went to college. I went to Syracuse University. I got my BFA in musical theater. And then wow. luckily, right after that, I went on, uh, they had an audition for uh, Les Miserables um, and I auditioned and I got cast as Marius and that that's, was the start of my career. While I was in college, I had many other jobs. I worked at Syracuse Stage, which is a professional theater. And my first paid job was at uh, Bush Gardens. I was part of the original cast of the Bush Street Boys, which is exactly <laughs> what it sounds like. It was uh, it was uh, four guys doing covers of Backstreet Boys and In Sync uh, in a theater at Bush Gardens. That was my first job, and it was probably the best summer of my life. What about M? M, what was your? How did you get into theater, musical theater, or what was? Right, my first job. Oh, um, well, I I grew up in North Carolina, so uh, I did a lot of community theater when I was in middle school and into high school. And nice. then um, I grew up dancing as well. And then after I graduated high school, I went to AMDA in New York. Um, and my first job out of school was uh, the National Tour of Cats. I toured oh, wow. yeah, for a year with cats. Um, what and cat? Then, what cat? I was Demeter. So I sang oh, Macavity. Yeah. Yeah, you know that yeah. Show? yeah 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 um, so that was my first that was my first job first gig yeah first gig yeah uh -huh. um what was going through your head the night you guy made your broadway debut um so my broadway debut was in, in the greece revival with laura osnes yeah i was oh, a I yeah, so I was um, a partial swing, which means I did one number a night and then I understudied Laura and I understudied the role of Patty Simcox and Cha Cha. So my Broadway debut was one number and I remember my parents were in the audience and I 
just remember doing the number and then walking off stage and being like, oh my gosh, I just performed on Broadway. Mm. <laughs> like it was mm. very, it was so cool. Very surreal, right? Yeah. yeah. And, you, and then the party was so fun. It was just such a cool experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my you, yeah. Broadway debut, uh, the first night that I went on. So um, <laughs> I don't know. I was, I was so nervous. I, I really, I think I had a panic attack and oh, I, I had to leave the show halfway through. <laughs> not opening night, not opening night but in mm -hmm. previews oh man yeah, and jeremy, jeremy kushner like went on for me halfway no. through i thought it was an asthma attack but i think it turned out to be a panic attack and uh after that it was okay but i mean yeah it's the I first. Had been, it had been such a long time coming like i didn't make my broadway debut till i was 30 and it was not oh, wow. it wasn't gradual i was judas yeah. and jesus christ superstar all oh, of a sudden oh my god yeah, all of a sudden was, so it's <laughs> not like i I no. had I got to tiptoe into Broadway and then yeah, I was thrown right. into, I was thrown into the I was thrown into, into the, the most difficult then. role for any man uh, in, in musical yeah. theater as my Broadway debut um, and that kind of pressure just got to me. Was that oh, the yeah. revival at the Neil Simon? Uh huh. That's right. Yep. The, oh, the, the revival of Neil Simon. This guy. He <laughs> knows <laughs> everything. You're, yeah. you're, you're like. Yeah, yeah, man. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, um. Now. <laughs> Um, shock how did you guys meet? Oh, we had the same manager. So uh, we were so sort of set. We knew of each other, but had never met before. We were set up. I think my, so my manager said, do you know, uh, you know, Emily Paget?" And I didn't, but then I looked her up and realized that I had seen her on an episode of the HBO series, Louie. She played Louie's daughter in one of the episodes. And I was like, oh yeah, she's really cute. Um, can I, uh, she asked, she was asking about me, I guess. And I said, um, <laughs> you think it's cool if I just reach out to her? And I just sent her a Facebook message and I was like, and asked her, I was like, hey, I'm, I'm at the moment I was doing the out of town tryout for uh, Amazing Grace in Chicago. And I was like, I'm gonna be back in town in a month. Do you wanna have lunch? And that's, and we had lunch at, at um, uh, Japanese restaurant. on 43rd. Yeah, it, it was called? the, I don't remember. Everyone goes there. But Everyone it was like there. 15 minutes long because he was late coming out of rehearsal and then had to be back earlier or something. So it was literally yeah. like 15 minutes. And I yeah, think we shook sure hands after or something. <laughs> I don't think that well, sounds yeah. right. I don't think I would have. Sh I That's not accurate. Other than that. That's not accurate, honey. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a little. I'm sure it was a hug or something. Anyway, that was it. Were yeah. you doing a show during that time? Yeah, you hmm? were you were you were, on, sure. you were between shows or something. I was. It was in between when sideshow was at the Kennedy sideshow. You were in rehearsals, weren't you? No, sideshow had just finished at the Kennedy Center, and it was before we started rehearsal for Broadway. So we were. It was like the end of summer, like July August. Were you were ending again? What was that? What were you doing in Sideshow? Um, I played Daisy. I played one of the twins in Sideshow. Huh? Um, yeah, it was an amazing experience. And when you did Amazing Grace, Jack, yeah. was, that, was that at the Netherlands? It sure was. And that was really cool. It was cool to be... Uh, it was cool to to be in a theater that Rent started at. That was really yeah. cool um, to see all their signatures on the wall, and you know, it's just, there's a lot of awesome history there. So that was really that was really neat. Do you do you guys get to work a lot together when you first started uh, out? Now we do. Well, now we do at concerts, well, now, but, yeah. but yeah. we never we worked were, together before. No. Mm -hmm. But now we we have a bunch of you know you saw us. We have that show that you saw yeah. us do. We've got concerts that we do all over all over the place, and, and it's fun. We just did, but we just did our first show together last week, or yeah. the first show, our first real show we ever did together. We did uh, songs for a new world at the Flint Repertory Theater in, in Michigan. Yeah, um, it coming the paper mill in October. Oh yes, That's right. yeah. and yeah. I'm gonna be on the red carpet, yeah. and it's the first time I'm gonna meet. J.R.B. Oh, oh cool. nice. In person. That's exciting. Because yeah. it's yeah. been on my show before, but virtually. Mm. Uh -oh. Awesome. Like That's cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. I like to start out, by the way. So, um, 
Now we're black. I don't, <laughs> who came up with the idea of the concept? That you so, so, hmm. so in 2016, I had, uh, well, we had just started, we'd been together for like a year, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I had, at the end of Amazing Grace, I had injured my leg pretty bad. Ooh. Yeah, I had, I had injured my leg in Amazing Grace. Um, actually, during a performance, I, what did I do? I tore a tendon in my ankle bad. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, I have to put him down for a nap. That's all right, I'm still That's here fine. though. That's fine. Okay, say bye-bye. Yeah, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so yeah, in 2016, at the end of the run of Amazing Grace, I badly hurt my ankle during a, sh a run, uh, a show. Uh, somebody had left a playbill in the audience, and I ran down, and I, it was a scene where I had to run down and plant my feet and jump from the from the uh, audience onto the stage and somebody left a playbill in the audience and I stepped on it like this and my mm. ankle went completely sideways so oh, I was laid up for six months and actually Emily I, I went to stay with Emily while she was rehearsing um Bright Star in Washington DC um wow. so and she took care of me uh while I was I couldn't do anything um so yeah, it sounds during like that, that was brutal it was oh, terrible uh, and I also I also I had a bunch of injuries from that show I, a bell fell on my head I, I had to get my head stapled together and uh and, and i had injuries from from jesus christ superstar i had hurt my my shoulder and i was just like you know what i because when i perform i i really throw myself into it and do i just don't even with reckless abandon so <laughs> so at that so at that time when emily and i were together i was like you know what i, I don't want to leave my uh career in the hands of of anybody else and I, i'm gonna start writing sh I, I love to write i'd always love to write uh, and people are always asking me to, to do concerts so i decided to write a concert that i thought would sell which was mm -hmm. josh young sings andrew lloyd weber because at the time people knew me as the guy who was nominated for tony for judas so i thought that would sell and i would do it in new york and that's what i did i did it at uh, 54 below and it sold out um i taped it uh and i used clips of the tape to send to concert agents and managers all over the place. And I got traction from that. I started uh, I started doing shows at performing arts centers. Um, a lot of cruise ships asked me to come fly in for, for a few nights and do my show and fly out and that was fun. Uh, and I realized that I just, I liked having more control over my career uh, than having, than doing these shows and hurting myself. Um, <laughs> and I also didn't know how well I was gonna, how well I was gonna recover with my ankle at the time. Um, yeah. so, so, uh, I, between 2016 and now, now that I have like three different managers, um, concert managers handling my concert stuff, I wrote more shows, uh, and I've incorporated Emily into them. And now, between, now I, I, I'm, I run the musical theater department at Oakland university, but whenever I want, I can just call one of my managers and be like, Hey, I've got a free weekend. Can you book me something somewhere? And, and Emily and I will still get to scratch that performing itch and 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 perform, and we get it takes us to amazing places where we're doing uh, doing uh, the Toronto Symphony uh, in March. Uh, we are doing the Detroit Symphony. That's not too far away from where we are, but in February, uh, we have uh, a few shows in Florida. Uh, we've we've done our show in Hawaii. Um, but it's a great oh. way to keep performing and traveling and, and still performing. Um, and like I said, we just did songs for a new world. So, you know, once in a while, we'll get to do productions as well. Was that virtually or live? Say it again. Virtually or live? Which one? A song for a new world. That was live. It was live. It was only two performances. It was outdoors. It was two performances. Um, but unfortunately, the second performance got rained out, so it was one mm. performance we got to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, Mother Nature has its way of uh, rearing its ugly head. <laughs> oh, now, yeah. If uh, you ever came back to Broadway, what would be your dream ball that you can do with Emily? I, so, with with Emily, oh, I mean, well, I, I know the two of us have been wanting somewhere to ask us to do uh, Les Mis, and for Emma could play Fontaine, and I play Valjean. 
that's that's pr probably like the only thing I, I'm not a huge fan of New York City. I, I, it's too much for me. I've got ADD and I, I'm distracted too easily by <laughs> too everything. Much by everything. Oh, yeah, I, can see. I, I just can't. I can't deal with it. It's, it that's like makes my heart palpitate and I have a hard right. time breathing in New York City. So that's unfortunate for somebody who wanted a career in musical theater. But that's why. <laughs> but I also right. wanted a family. So that's why we, we left and had a family out here and we love it in the suburbs. But I would come right. back for Les Miserables. If, if they wanted me uh, as, as Jean Valjean. <laughs> what, what do you think would make Emily come back? Um, what would make Emily come back? She, she would, there are more things. She's making a, a bottle for the baby right now. Um, <laughs> she would come back for, for more things than me. I think if it was just a, a brand new, exciting role, uh, she would she would come back for a, a little yeah. stay in New York. Or and, a director I would want to work with. Or a director she would want to work with. Uh, she gets excited about working with really uh, creative directors. Um, there's a I think she's got a list of directors she would like to work with. Um, but I, I think until the kids are a little bit older, maybe it would have to be like in a year or two. Emily's also joining the faculty at Oakland University. They just asked she's gonna she's going to teach uh, musical theater dance there. And she's also going to coach the senior class. Of I've heard of coach. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, how did Wiz King Earth, the brown album that you did, or the white album? Oh, the white album. The white album. Is Wait, the first, I have first light ear. <laughs> yeah, it's gone. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the, uh, the white album. So that was, uh, I was going on his. Uh, I was going on tour, uh, an international tour of West Side Story. And I really wanted to do it. It was going, I went all around the world. We started in Macau, China, went to Singapore, Italy, Germany. And I really wanted to do it because I wanted to have that chance to travel uh, and yeah, play sure. Tony. But yeah. they, uh, they weren't paying me what I wanted to be paid. So I said to them, if, if I make an album, will you sell it at every venue and take no more than I think 10%? And that was my way of negotiating my contract by myself um, without an agent at the time. So, uh, so that like doubled my salary. And so to be honest, it wasn't like, oh, this is something I need yeah. to do. I want, it wasn't like a project from my heart. It was to make money. Right. That being said, yeah. when I got into, when I started, I really loved doing and it became a project. I worked with one of my closest friends, uh, uh, Brie Loudermilk. It, the, uh, uh, sorry, she, it's she now. It's very hard. I've been for, for 30 years and, um, and, and it's now Brie. Uh, Brie, okay. she, forgive me. Um, <laughs> it's okay. it's all right. uh, she did an, an amazing, uh, amazing job with the orchestrations. Uh, that, I think that was the first time the song Run Away With Me that she wrote was recorded. Um, and that's on that album. Um, oh, I see that, yeah, track four. Because like, I think now, I think that's the most, it's one of the most like taught and recorded songs by students in universities. Like whenever somebody comes to audition, for, they I'm the song actor. I'll hold it up, then I can. Okay, that's it's, no. Oh, it's like we're having I, a connection issues here. <laughs> can you, can you hear me? Yeah, something's going on. I don't know if it's, do we have Facebook still up? <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. know if we have that up. Did we close it? I thought we did. Yeah, we're I don't know what's going on with this thing. <laughs> anyway, long story short, um, that's why there's some like West Side Story on there. It's because I was about to go on tour with West Side Story. I wanted people to buy it. I see. I see. Yeah, so that was that. And that was 2005. Um, that was oh, see, that's a little bigger. Oh, 16 yeah. years ago, right? Wow. Yeah, that was two years after I graduated from college. Wow. Um, yeah, uh, I produced wow. it myself. I paid for it myself. And then uh, the the brown album. The brown album. That was that was uh, that was produced uh, by some. Uh, like they'll see it there. My friend yeah. Alan at at the news. Uh, one of the producers of uh, Come From Away, um, but he originally uh, was a doctor from Toronto who got interested in the production that I did of Superstar, which was for, from Stratford Shakespeare Festival. 
to the New York, well, first transferred to uh, La Jolla Playhouse. He saw me in a V at Stratford, which was the year of Jesus Christ Superstar, and became friends. And now he's he he's been producing. I think he's he won he won one Tony Award, and he's got another nomination for. I think it was he produced uh, was one of the producers of Hedwig uh, with Rick Harris when he came back. Uh, uh-huh. He started his his foray into musical theater by seeing me and Evita and then producing that album. And uh, now he's a Tony Award winner. Cheers. Yeah. And before we know it, you just promote the letter. Tony Award winner just by linking theater and investing in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, is there any more content for you guys? Yeah. Yeah, so lots. Uh, let's see. The next one we're doing... Uh, I should really update. I don't even know the exact date. So I think I want to. That's a brand new concert that we just wrote. It's called. Uh, oh, maybe I. Image with you guys. All right, that would be fun. Here, hold on. I think I can. Let's see. Da, da, da. So it's a brand new show. It's called uh, Valjean Cosette and. So basically, it's Emily and myself doing a let's see if I can find an image of uh, the, the, the. Can you repeat that you edit with Emily you and doing what? I'll uh, show you in a second. One second, let me pull this up. You're breaking. You're breaking up a little. Breaking. Yeah. 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 I don't know what's going on. I don't know why. I don't know why. Give me. Give me just a sec. Can you? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh yeah, we can hear it. Yeah. Uh huh. But you can't see me. Yeah. Sometimes it's like breaking up with like a. You know, it's trying to like rebuffer and all that stuff. You know. Weird. Um. Okay. Let me. I'm gonna share my screen. Hold on a second. Okay. Share screen. Okay, so this is my new show. Are you able to see that? Uh, yep. So yes, it's called Valjean Cosette and a String Quartet. It's uh, myself and Emily. Uh, it's and it's all the most beautiful Broadway songs from the 1980s, accompanied uh-huh. by a string quartet and a piano. Um, we do we. we we wrote a beautiful duet version of the story goes on from baby. I'm not sure if you know that song. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then um, we were doing a, a male female duet. That's what, so, so that song, I don't think it's been done before as a, as a duet we're doing. Uh, I'm excited about this version of uh, I've, you know, the uh, I've been here before um, duet from uh, closer than ever. It's normally two women. We're doing a du- that duet. We're doing all the best songs from Les Mis, obviously, um, arranged for the string quartet and piano. Um, we do a, a phantom medley. We're doing some songs from chess. Um, it's all, uh, I think we're, we're going to do Suddenly Seymour, all the best songs from 1980s, oh, wow. but with the string quartet. I, we're going to be doing it. We'll be doing cool. it in New York. We're going to be doing it at the Green Room oh, wow. in New York, but not until, that'll be in April. Uh, I think it's April, let me see here, April, I think April 9th, I think April 9th at the Green Room in New York, um, we'll be doing that show, so that's exciting, um, but we have a, several other dates for it, but that's, the, I think that's the one that's going to be, clear. are you, are, do you live in New York, Jesse? No, we're in Jackson, uh, New We're in, yeah, in New Jersey. You're in New Jersey. Uh, I don't think we have any dates currently for New Jersey. You came to the clubhouse. Oh, so so you live so you live by the clubhouse. Yeah, we yeah. are going to be the next time we're going to be in Jersey. I'm not. We don't have our date yet, but we're going to be in Margate. You know where that is? It's near Atlantic City. That's familiar. Oh, okay, down south. Yeah, Bentner, Margate, Bentner, uh, um, Longport. It's on the uh-huh. it's on it's on the water there, and my parents have a uh-huh. beach house there. But it's going to be at the JCC. We're going to do a show at the JCC there. Uh, we don't have our date yet. <clears throat> and nice what do you say? Nice area. Oh yeah, it's a really nice area. 
So that's the next time we're in Jersey, but I'm not sure what show we're doing. Mm -hmm. But if you want to take a ride into New York, that should be a good show at the Green Room. Yeah, it's a hot spot in the Green Room. What the day again? April 9th? The day, I believe, yeah. I believe believe it's it's April 9th. I believe it's April 9th, but um, okay. they'll def- I mean, if you keep an eye on I think they'll probably post it on the Green Room's site. We're only oh, going to sure. do, I think we're only doing one performance. So get your ticket if you want to see it. <laughs> right. I, I, I'm, I'm serious. I think, I mean, normally people do like four, but since I, I, I'm actually just going to be in town because uh, for my, my senior showcase for my students, we fly in for a week. So I just, uh, while I'm there, I was like, hey, I'd love to do a show with you guys if you want. And that's that's why I'm doing it. Um, yeah. Kind of just fun, just one time. So <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Good. Yeah. What next for Emily? Uh, well, I think I, I think what she's most excited about right now is starting teaching at Oakland. So it's kind of fun. Both of us are teaching at Oakland. Our daughter, uh, our daughter goes is gonna be going to school it's at the the um oh, what is it called? Anyway, Oakland University has a fantastic uh, school for early childhood education, and our daughter is going to oh, be wow. going there. And it happens to be right across the parking lot from us, so it's kind of fun. Oh, that's very um, convenient. Yeah, very convenient. So, so yeah, I think she's excited about starting to teach dance, musical theater dance at Oakland, and to coach the senior class. She'll be coaching that senior class that I'll be bringing to New York. She'll be coaching them on the material that they'll be doing in their showcase. Yeah. Um, what. What were you doing during the pandemic? Did you build a studio like everybody else so you could perform? I, I we did we we did some concerts here. Uh, I could sh- I could show you what they looked like just because I happen to be on my computer. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, but, well, I I know I built the whole studio. In oh, my- did you? In my living room. It's like MEC7. Yeah. (laughs) You came into my living room now, you would think it would be like MEC Studio. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And when when I'm performing, I have a green room so I can change background. Yeah, that's pretty cool. A lot going on here. Nice, nice. Since uh, March of 2020. Yep. Oh boy, February, yeah. March. <laughs> we 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 put up a velvet curtain in our living room and we did some virtual shows. I'm trying yeah. to see. Oh, I, thought, yeah. I, I thought I had a clip that I could show you what those looked like, but uh, and then and then a lot of what I, I was teaching the whole time I was teaching. I'm lucky enough that I I left New York when I did and I had a job and I was teaching the whole time and and I figured out a way. I figured out a way to. Um, to teach live during the pandemic. Uh, I happen to have a video that I could show you how that worked. Would you like to see that? Yeah, sure. It's kind of, uh, I think it's kind of fun. Let me see if I can share this video with you. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Just this, share. All right, so you see that? Oh, I feel like, wait one second. Let me stop that. I want to share audio better. So optimize video, share sound, okay, share. All right, and I'm gonna fast forward it to show you how we dealt with the pandemic. Uh, first of all, we had these amazing, we had these master classes. We had Stephen Schwartz. Uh, we had these virtual master classes. Who else? Well, obviously, we had Emily. We had Corey Codd. We had Andrew Lippa. Um, oh, you! Laura Osnes. We had oh, Laura Michelle awesome. Kelly. We had Norm Lewis. Um, wow. We had Leah Salonga. We had there's Bree. He's Bree now. He's not Brian anymore. Um, and, uh, so this was our master, we had a master class initiative. Oh my God. Wow. I've learned to slam on the brakes. This was our master class initiative. Before I even um, so while people were home, I made sure every week they got to work with these great mistake. people. And I think, uh, before I lead with the worst of me, to work with. give them no reason to stare. Yeah, that's cool. Anyway, you get the picture. They had, they had a great time. Um, well, yeah, there's a lot of people there. Oh yeah, a lot of faces. Um, we had Jesse Mueller, um, uh, who actually, who actually I went to school with. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we met her before. She's really nice. Yeah, and, very, very, yeah, very she's cool. cool. And yeah. I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but uh, 
lower my eyes in this is a very good random mind. I think you did. All right, so so here's how we dealt with COVID. And for me and the work that I want to do with my students, Zoom is conducive. On local laws, we have to have a reduced capacity in each of those rooms, and everybody has to wear a mask the whole time, which is not exactly conducive to teaching acting. And for me and the work that I want to do with my students, Zoom is just not always going to cut it. So we are very fortunate here at Oakland University to have Michigan's largest producing professional theater right on our very campus. When COVID struck, they were anxious to help out in any way they could, and we were anxious not to let COVID put limitations on our teaching or learning. So I took a little tour of the space to see how Meadowbrook could best serve us. But what's really cool is this one-car garage. Most people, when they think of a large theater, That's they think Travis of a Walter, giant loading the artistic director of Meadowbrook Theater. We have a one -car garage. I kind of stole this from their website, so the other I'll let them show you around. Barner Hall, and then they get broken down, put into a truck, and come through this one-car garage. This space and the next one have become invaluable to us, and I'll show you how in a minute. This is where the actors get ready for the show, wait for their cues. Yeah, you get it. It's a really nice green room. Now I want to show you how we use all of these spaces to teach, learn, and not miss a beat despite the challenges we're up against. So we're one of the only, the only uh, theaters or musical theater programs that actually had so live classes. So I adapted classes. that loading dock garage, backstage area, and green room to function. That's, cool. and in That's very cool. Six hundred seat Absolutely. auditorium. Hopefully in a and second. And students we'll to, who took the option to go from home. Okay. We created a safe and socially distant workspace where not only do we not sacrifice in our pedagogy. We gain valuable on-camera experience and high-definition recordings of all of our work. Due to the space we've created, those students that you see, That's nice there. they're watching their fellow student work with me, not at home, but live, without a mask, thanks to some safety precautions and a little thoughtful ingenuity. Okay, that's enough of him. But as you can see, <laughs> the view you're looking at is exactly what our students who decide to take at home can see. So if a student was the sick, they left, get to teaching. zoom in. That's Jonathan yeah. in the middle, working, and those students on the side That's that are at home on Zoom. We've turned that little loading bay garage area into a working, functional, and very useful learning, broadcasting, video studio. Those aren't your lyrics, right? So you need to put all that in just that little bit. Okay? Here we go. And then what way? everybody's There's behind more. me in the auditorium. Students can take right there in those chairs. but. We can also broadcast right out to that 600 seat theater that Meadowbrook has provided for us. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. those students can sit right there, completely safe, socially distant, and watch the work the student is doing. They can see their friends at home, and they can see me teaching. That's about a live pianist. Let's see if I can get to there. Let's see. So we had uh, exhaust fans on either side here to make it safe for me. Oh, I see that. See, um, okay. And then up those stairs is where our accompanists sat. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. He's always wearing a mask. So I told you before, we used all these spaces to the best of our ability. And you saw that green room, and now I'll show you how we use that. That camera right there is focused and hardwired to a computer up here. That computer is seen by our accompanist. Our accompanist can see and play for people in real time so that there's no delay. We have our accompanist in a separate room for his safety, the performer's safety, who's uh, not wearing a mask. And at any point, we can put a glass door right in that frame. So that's it. Um, but we made it work. We made yeah. it work. Yeah, it worked. We yeah, made, you gotta, you we, take made a, it, we made it work. Oh yeah, yeah. I Everyone ever, found a way. <laughs> for the most I part. Ever, uh, work work. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's gonna stop you. Right? <laughs> that's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah. If there's a will, there's a way. Uh, that's exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. Um. Where could they find your album if they wanna buy one? Uh, Amazon or, or, or uh, iTunes. Oh, Amazon. Uh, a physical yeah, physical album. You'd have to. I, I don't know. You'd have to uh, somehow email me um, because I don't. I don't sell the the hard copies. I don't think. I mean, you could. I, let me see. Let's see. I don't think you can go on Amazon oh, and buy my album. Oh, okay. You can definitely download it. Uh, 
Yeah. Oh yeah, the yeah, the digital version. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think yeah. let's see, here it is. Uh audio C D. Oh no. There's one <laughs> my first my the white album, there's one available. Uh, but they're charging, well, I don't know who's selling it, but they're charging uh, 30 bucks with $5 shipping. So, uh, and then this guy. <laughs> and, th and that one, I let's see, I, I don't think, I don't even see that one at all on here. Uh, I only see, see the light on. There's, let's see, Josh, Josh Young, and that's still streaming. I should, I should know all these answers. Um, <laughs> uh, I think right. that, that's only available streaming. That's only available. Uh, yep. Um, Anything coming out with Emily, like album? Or... I don't think that's anything that's that she's even thought about or she's we've ever talked about. But I think we have talked about me making another album and her, you know, singing on it. I think that's mm. totally something that could happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The totally. ever thing of doing the sound of music. Do we ask the question again? Did Emily ever think of playing Maria in the sound of music? I have no idea. I I don't think I don't think she ever has thought about it. I mean, we've never talked about it uh, in our in our show. She sings one of the songs from uh, Sound of Music, but I don't think that's one of her like roles she's dying to play. Do you know what role she's dying to play? Well, she was dying to be in uh, songs for New World, which was why she was very upset when the second uh, evening was canceled due to rain. Uh, that was one of the things. Um, yeah, that's a bummer. Uh, what other roles? I mean, I know she wants to. I know she wants to also do Les Mis. She wants to play Fontaine in Les Mis. Um, aside from that, I, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. I think that, I think those are the roles she really wants to really wants to do. What is your dream role? Are My. You I, I want to play. I, I want to play uh, Valjean. That's 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 it. Like that's the only thing. I I was lucky enough that early in my career, I like I've ever, I've already played all the roles that I could have ever dreamed of playing. Like I got my the the role that I wanted to play right when I graduated from college. I played right when I graduated from college. Marius. That's what I like when I was twelve, and I when I went to like the see the touring production. I saw Les Mis. That was my first show, and I said I want to play that role. And the person who I saw play that role was um, it was Hugh Panero. Hugh Panero was Marius when I when the first time I ever saw a musical, and I ended up playing Marius to his Jean Valjean at one point when I was younger. So I, I got to work with him also. And, and now I think I'm just at the point where I want to play Jean Valjean. And there's no other role that exists right now that I'm like, I'm dying to play that. that I've, I've already done them all, all the ones that I wanted to do. There was a time where I really wanted to play Billy Bigelow in, uh, um, in Carousel. Uh, it may, it's okay if I don't do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm um, okay. Would you ever like a musical? Yes, I would. Absolutely. And, and uh, funny thing, uh, I actually, before the movie of, of The Last Five Years came out, I adapted The Last Five Years as a screenplay uh, and sent it to Jason. I actually have an email, his response, but I spent, I don't know, I spent like six months adapting The Last Five Years as a screenplay. Oh. Uh, I, I was, I'm friends with Daisy Prince, who um, directed the original production. Uh, and mm -hmm. she was, she, she you know, uh, supported me in doing that. And she connected me with Jason. And uh, after I'd done all that work, Jason was like, sorry, I already sold the rights to a production company and they have in-house writers. So <laughs> I love to write. Um, it's definitely, I, I would love to write a musical. I have no time to even think about doing that right now, it's, but uh, yes, that's rough. That's that's yeah. Hard. I mean, Fun right time. now I have to I have to yeah. write the patter between uh, the songs in Valjean, Cosette, and a string quartet. That's what I got to do uh, right now. Yeah. But writing yeah. a whole musical, I, something I definitely would. That's love undertaking. Yeah, what? that's undertaking. Yeah. If you could <laughs> yeah. write a musical, what would it be based on? Oh, I've had so many ideas, but I can't. Let's see. I mean, so whenever I have like an idea like that, I write it in my notes um, on, and let's just see, uh, music, I'm going to write them, I'm going to do a search, musical based on, and see if I ever wrote down my ideas for a musical. Here we go, musical, da, da, da. I, I can't think of what it would, 
I don't know. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't find what it was, but I'll tell, I'll tell you if I, if I remember one of the many musical ideas that I've had, I'll shoot you an email. Um, uh, I just, so many times I, I, I like re watch the news or I watch a movie and I think, oh, that story could would make a great musical. Yeah, it strikes up an and idea. I, yeah. And I, yeah. and I feel like I write it down, but then I don't put it somewhere that I can easily find that idea again. <laughs> Access it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You could write a music or, or, or a movie, what would it be? What would it be? I think it's the same answer. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I have ideas. I can't remember what those ideas are at the top. <laughs> on the top of your head, mm -hmm. uh, sure. Um, oh, I, I know I've had some great ones, but I probably shouldn't even tell you because then somebody who's watching, yeah, this someone has great yeah, ideas. Someone's gonna take it, right? Yeah, like uh, for instance, I, people I, like that. My, for instance, I I I was worried that. I thought I thought the uh, name for my concert that Valjean Cosette and a String Quartet. I was like, I don't want anybody to take that name because I think it's a really good name. And the image that I wrote, I thought that was a really great image. But I I and I talked to an entertainment lawyer, and there's nothing I can do to protect it anyway. So, uh, uh, that's well, why, yeah, you got to be careful with everything. I know it's so hard. Well, the funny thing about that image is, uh, I was. I think people, my manager was like, you can't use that. That's Les Miserables is going to sue you, this and that. Mm -hmm. But it, it just so happens that that image is public domain because it's from the original 1800s novel. And Les Mis, oh, just, wow. Les Miserables uses it. So they got that image okay. for free. And I can uh, use it as I, as, wow. I, as I want because it's public domain. Uh, so right. that's awesome. That's really, I think, going to be helpful to me. Oh, uh, you know. Um, oh, when do you think you'll start on the new show? Start, what do you mean? St start working on it? Yeah. So it's done all the, all the um, charts, which are, which is the music that the musicians read. Those are done for the most part. So we already have our song list. We have the charts. We have what we have to give to the musicians. Um, and we already have an outline. Um, written you know what we're saying between the songs uh, how it's going to flow that's all pretty right. much done we were supposed to have our first performance during covid uh it was canceled so we were supposed to have do a performance of it like a year ago uh, but it was canceled so we're just waiting to do it uh in february we're, it's going to be that's, that'll be the first time we do it it's going to be with cabaret 313 which is the premier uh, cabaret company in detroit um and it's going to be their valentine's day show that's Can cool. you give us a little of the song list? Yeah, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, without oh, getting yeah. in trouble, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Someone complaining. <laughs> well, there's there's that duet of the story goes on, which I don't think has ever been done before from Baby. Um, Let's see, where's my song list? Give me one sec. Uh, yeah, I think that's the biggest challenge, trying to do something that no one's done before. That's always, yeah. that's so hard. Yeah. Um, there's a, Emily does a medley from Cats. Oh, you saw that medley from Cats. She's going to include that. It was, she did that in our last concert, right? I think so. You recall that? Yeah. yeah. So we're including that in this as well. Yeah, I wasn't here for that. So Got yeah, it. I didn't see it. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, song list. The uh, medleys are always cool, though. Yeah. I, I love medleys. Uh, uh, if you can do any Alan Menken song, what would it be? Ellie, any Alan Menken show? Alan Menken, a uh, song. Yeah. Song. Any Alan Menken song? Yeah. Did yeah, he these... write? Did, did did he write out there? Did he write Hunchback? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then it would be. I, I've done that. I've I've sung that song before. Uh, I, I love that song. It's got it's got booked me many jobs. Um, so, it'll, yeah, it'll it gives us some one. good luck. Yeah. I was very I was very uh, jealous of Michael Arden when he got to play the role uh, at Paper Mill because uh, I definitely wanted to do that. Yeah, yeah I can't find I can't find my list of songs right now. But like I said, it's gonna there's there's a lot of all the best all the best shows uh, from the '80s: Phantom, Cats, Les Mis, Chess. Uh, there's going to be yeah, oh, Alan Menken wrote wrote uh, Little Shop. There's going to be some Little Shop. Uh -huh. And which Little Shop? What are you doing? Are you uh, we're going to do um, uh, Suddenly Seymour. Uh -huh. yeah. 
good in a way. Yeah, he likes that one. Um, I, I, thank, I just want to thank you for doing this and bear with all the technical difficulties that we have today. I missed the first part of that. I, I think you said I just wanted to thank you for, the, for doing oh, this. Oh, yeah. yeah. My pleasure. My yeah. pleasure. Yeah, of course, you know, technical difficulties are. Yeah. I, I heard you guys just fine. Rise. I heard you guys just oh, yeah? fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, well, hopefully, hopefully your video, I think the video that it might, it, it might not have any technical difficulties. I'm not sure. Because okay. I think, I, I think that uh, the recording should be what I see, maybe. And then it downloads off right. your. Yeah, you're right. So you might, you can edit out where we're, where there's issues uh, where you're saying, right. I can't hear you if you wanted to. Right. Yeah, sometimes it's it's good to just leave it the way it is, but yeah, yeah I don't know. I mean, it might not be worth it. You know. Oh <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 about the logistical things that you I had to do at two that you can and logistical. Logistical. Yeah. And what was that? The logistical things. The logistical things. What about them? What about Thank them? you for bearing with Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. No, no, yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, it is so hard. It's not like before you have kids when like, oh, yeah, we can do anything anytime. And I got to make <laughs> oh, sure yeah. it doesn't conflict with feeding and sleeping. And it's a whole other thing. That yeah. being said, I'm I'm glad I don't regret it. But <laughs> but it definitely your life is not your own anymore. And that's okay. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah that's just it, the way it goes. It won't be your own for 18, 18 years. years. <laughs> yeah, and you got to meet you got to meet Leo, future Broadway star. Yeah, oh, I'm sure, probably right. Yeah, it's usually it runs in the blood for sure. Well, uh, uh, our daughter doesn't quite have any uh, sense of pitch, but Leo. <laughs> oh well, eh, that could change though I, eventually. We'll see. It could, change. it could change. Yeah, it could. You know, anyway. all of a sudden. <laughs> good. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, any other questions? Right. Or are we saying goodbye? Thank you yeah, again. Thanks. Okay. All right, all right, you're welcome. All right, thanks. Have a good one. Hello, all right, you too, Josh. Bye. Yeah, tell him. Okay, to, bye. To bye. Right, bye, Josh.